Well, get ready. It's time for episode 246 of the Three Point Podcast. We're teamed with Sky Mint Canvas, Michigan's leader in the industry, over 15 locations throughout the state of Michigan. Check out the new Sky Mint Reserve. That is the good stuff. If you're over 21, make sure you go online at skymint.com and sign up for the rewards program. Over at the Corona store, if you stop on in, tell them you listen to Three Point Podcast, give them the coupon code 3.20, you'll get 20% off Sky Mint products, and that's, again, for new customers only. Also, we're proudly partnered with Memorial Health. Healthcare, home of the now Community Wellness Center. Wellness Center now offering a 21-day health challenge for just a buck in initiation fee and $2 a day. That's less than 50 bucks on your commitment. Enroll now through January 15th. Take advantage of this special offer. Also includes a free one-on-one session with an exercise psychologist or physiologist, I should say, not psychologist, a free in-body scan, free drop-in group exercise classes, contactless check-in, and a whole lot more. It's the uh, Memorial Healthcare Wellness Center. For more details, give them a call, 989-720-7081. You can view a listing of group and aquatic exercise classes at memorialhealthcare.org slash wellness dash center. Great way to try out the center for you and a loved one. And if you if you sign up for this uh, 21-day challenge, they'll give you 75% off the initiative fee. So good deal wow. all the way around. So. And by the way, we were talking off air a little bit. We're going to be recording a special three-point podcast at their recording studios there. Looking forward to that here uh, at the end of the month. So that's going to be a lot of fun, Matt. You'll be in town, and it's going to be great. Yeah, I'm curious. to. I haven't seen the place in person yet. Um, I haven't checked it out. So I'm going to show up a little early or either before or after, either way. Mm -hmm. Walk around and check the facility out. I'm yeah. yeah, everyone raves about it. I haven't heard anyone say like, "Yeah, it's not that nice." Like, it seems like it's a cool facility. Yeah, I haven't seen it yet either. I mean, Ted, you every pre pod, it seems like you're bringing it up how much you love the place. So I <laughs> right. think you might have to give us the tour of this place for the podcast to give a live review. It, yeah, it looks awesome every time I drive by it. I love the landscape, uh, yeah. and like Matt said, it seems like everybody's loving this place. So I'm excited. Yeah. Sounds really good, boys. We'll definitely do that. And I also want to thank our other local partners that include AZ Printing Solutions, Capital Sports Field House, Crow Real Estate and Auction, Nelson House Funeral Homes, Rivals Tap House and Grill, and Success Group Mortgage and Servicing. Well, uh, we're going to get a little prep spotlight coming up here in just a minute, but uh, anything new with you fellas here uh, in our little catch-up portion? Well, I did the classic. I mean, it's Christmas time. You know, we're all gearing up for the holidays. Ted's preparing for his... 10 fried chicken piece meal coming up in Frankenmuth in a couple weeks. But I did this the, this, this past weekend. I did the classic uh, um, go meet Santa thing with the kids. And Aww. I'm sure, Jared, you just can't even fathom what that would be like having a couple kids and taking them to see Santa or whatever. I can already see you laughing, giggling well, about it. But <laughs> the reason I, before you can see, the reason I'm laughing is, you know, I, I was actually thinking this uh, just like when I see your Instagram, it's like if I'm, if I was your kid, man. Like, man, they have a great every weekend. You're doing something cooler than the last weekend. You're you're knocking off all like the the checkbook, like kids things like going to see Santa. I don't think I ever did that when I was a kid. I never did that once. So I see I, I actually I meant to ask my parents that I know I did. I don't think it was. I don't know. I'd, I'd be curious to ask if it was a yearly tradition. It seems like now it has become maybe it is an, an Instagram thing. Maybe it's a social media thing. It's a yearly you go meet Santa every year. And well, oh, thank you for I, I think you were complimenting my, yeah, my parenting. Yeah, I, maybe, like maybe was. <laughs> but I mean, to, to be honest, we, we try and do stuff. I mean, I think a lot of people right. do, you know, we, we try to get out and do stuff. But no, it was cool because my daughter is at the age where, you know, everything this Christmas, she wants to decorate. She wants to put lights everywhere. It is the most magical, cool mm. thing. She was just glowing jumping up and down when santa came so that was really cool to see and then you know with with the little guy he's not even a year yet so you're wondering is he about to scream his head off when he sits on santa's lap or is he just gonna sit there he basically just sat there pointed around and you know just soaked it all in so yeah you know it is not to get mushy but it's cool to see christmas through the kids eyes ted ted you remember that for sure oh heck yeah now i got grandkids that i'm going to be able to see that in fact i understand uh we're having our family get together saturday night from what i yeah. heard there might be an appearance from the north pole an early uh -oh. appearance from santa at the party so 
Uh, so we'll fill go. you in on that later on. I was <laughs> going to mention this though, Matt, since you are coming up here for the holidays, yep. uh, you know, and, and I'm sure we'll touch upon it when we have our special entertainment tonight, we're going to again, get into some of the great holiday movies out there. And I know one of your favorites is Polar Express. Have you got plans like next year, two years down the road to get your tickets for the Polar Express here out of town? See, so, so we've done it um, oh, down okay. here. There's, um, I know it's different because I know the one in Owasso is like the Polar original. Express train. It's the original. Yes. So that, that makes it way cooler. And my, my mom always asks my, my mom and like the, you know, my, my uh, siblings, kids and everything, they've done it before. Mm -hmm. So she always asks like, if we're coming back for the holidays, like do you want us to get tickets? Cause you have to buy them six months in advance or way whatever. in advance. Yeah. So we, we did actually do it. We went up to the mountains a couple of years ago and, and there's a polar express train um, up in the mountains in North Carolina. It's, it's really cool, but it's not like, you know, the, uh, Polar Express train like in Owasso. So we're, we're not doing it this year to answer your question. We are going to go to Crossroads Village ah, and ride the cool. train over there and, you know, see the right. lights and do all that kind of classic stuff. I'm sure it was Crossroads Village. Was that a thing when you were a kid, Ted? Did you guys do that? Uh, it came around a little bit past my uh, my being a kid, but it's been around a long time. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah, we're going to do that. You know, we're going to see family and do all that stuff. So looking forward to it. hoping there's going to be some snow. But yeah, yeah should we'll, be. you know, we'll get to it in our, you know, later on in Tedertainment, special Christmas uh, edition of Tedertainment tonight with our favorite Christmas movies. I feel like I'm a little bit of like a Christmas Scrooge. I, uh -oh. I never did the, the Crossroads Village and never. I mean, I freaking hate that Polar Express. I had to do uh, <laughs> like a spring cleanup on it one year when I was working for a landscaping company. <laughs> Dude, it was literally hell on earth that day. So you, many. You weeks. hate the Polar Express? Yeah, I, I don't like the movie. We'll get into that as well. <laughs> um, but no, the thing is, these like Man. this two to three week window here uh, after Thanksgiving before Christmas, it's the longest. It's the longest period of time of the entire calendar year, man. It, it takes forever. I just went to the mall this weekend. <laughs> Not even really Christmas shopping. My girlfriend needed, you know, Christmas clothes or something. And when I kid you not, I was standing in a Marshall's line for, I think, an hour. It was like going to <laughs> war at this Marshall's line right all the way around the store. I will say for I, I never got too irritated by it because they had they had the system down pat. Man. They had like eight different checkouts lines. Uh, the they had like little blinkers above the cat, the register when that one opened mm -hmm. up. So, you know, you always felt like the line was moving, yeah. but I, I was probably in line for 45 minutes on Saturday. So that, that's my catch. I mean, that's about all I've been up to, man. Just yeah. counting down the days till Christmas. Like I'm a little kid. Yeah. Come coming up before you know it. And I'm just counting down to uh, this weekend. It's going to be very special. We're going to have our little uh, immediate family Christmas Sunday morning after Frank and with the girls are staying overnight. Uh, with the three granddaughters it's gonna be oh that's cool it's gonna it's gonna be a crazy house uh saturday <laughs> night but it'll be it'll be fun it'll be i can tell I, from your voice it's not gonna be fun <laughs> well or or you can look at it because you're the big your whole fatel family that's probably saturday right that's saturday yeah. so by the time you guys get home on sunday those kids are gonna be crashed out i mean they're gonna be full of chicken and pizza and stuff that, that's the hope probably yeah, right yeah until they see all the presents under the tree how what do you think <laughs> uh, our chore will be to try and keep them out of the presents until sunday morning <laughs> yeah right that's going to be a challenge. Well, uh, that's about all the catch up we got. We're going to get into the prep spotlight. In fact, before we do, take a listen to this about from our friends at Capital Sports Fieldhouse. All right, guys, as you know, we had double header action. Game one, the girls contest on that was a three point podcast exclusive and a crunted down to Wasso 48 41 on Friday night. Sydney Gillette, 26 points for the Cavaliers. The cool story with her is, of course, she's going to U of M. I talked about it last week, going to join their rowing team. But cool. uh, the poor girls had back-to-back -back years with torn ACLs, and she's still out there her senior year leading the way. And, you know, and I know it's something physiologically uh, with, with females and their knees, but, man, just to go through two ACLs and back playing again, give her a lot of credit. Was, that, was it the same ACL? Do you know? Yeah, yeah, left man, leg. I mean, that's, that's just, well, first of all, the physical part to, you know, be able to battle back, but right, the mental part of still wanting to play, still wanting yeah. to put that work in, you know, that's, I can't even imagine. I've never had an injury like that. So I don't no. even know. Did, did you get to the bottom of the, the rowing story, how she ended up going to Michigan rowing? I mean, that's kind of your job pre, pre tip <laughs> to kind of get that type of insight. Yeah, I knew you'd stick me with a dagger here that we got live mics, but no, I did not. Wow. <laughs> well, Especially because you were my guest next year. Well, 
Well, you were going game. you were going full Vin Scully for the girls game, right? It was just you. Just me, yeah. So you you needed some you needed some content. Yeah, I'm surprised some... I'm surprised you didn't ask. Yeah, but you guys got to here's what you got to realize. As long even though I've done this for, you know, almost 40 damn years, the first day, the first game out of the gate, you got to check all the technical stuff. You got wires everywhere. You know, you got Sean from Vernon coming up and talking to you and Craig <laughs> coming up and talking to me. So I'm I'm getting a bit distracted. And don't get me wrong. I love talking with the boys. I love talking with people that come up to talk to me. But still, it takes away from some of that uh, concentration mode where I probably would have found out that answer. Well, I'll blame it on them. You had a 50 point <laughs> blowout. I mean, yeah, that's as tough as it gets for an or how would you rate your opening night performance in I what think, year is this now uh it's 37 37 i started in february of 85 in basketball obviously um yeah the the game the boys game well i, I had the girls game at least i got to get some of the basketball bugs out of me yeah. so i think the boys game despite being you know an 84 37 blowout by corona I think it's, I think the broadcast actually went pretty good. I mean, Corona hit 11 triples in the game, including six in the first quarter. I remember, I, th I think it was one of our relatives told me that Parker Isham is going to be the best player on the team. And I thought, really? I'll tell you what, they, they're junior class. It's pretty much all juniors playing for Corona and Rocky in this game. I don't know if it's going to be what he's going to be doing all year long. He ran five-man basketball. He played five players in the first quarter, brought hmm. five new players in in the second quarter. Did not miss a beat, man. It was... It was well. Owasso's definitely down. They're right. yeah. as their, as their yeah, coach said, tr they're they're going to be rebuilding. And as I mentioned in the broadcast, man, if you're rebuilding from a one and twenty team, you, you got some rebuilding to do then, because yeah. that's what they were last year. But they did play hard. I, I got to give them credit for that. And uh, just Corona, you know, I don't want to put the jinx on. Maybe I did a little bit in football, but man, they look good. I mean, yeah. they were they, they have they play well. They press all over the place. I mean, it, it was a fun game to watch our Cavaliers. I mean, if if you beat anyone by fifty and score almost ninety points, mm -hmm. uh, that's that's a that's an impressive for high school basketball. That's impressive. The one thing I would say, Coach Rocky, he you know he he knows he's a great coach. He knows what he's doing. I I can't understand. I've seen other teams do the five five five. I feel like your dad did one year, Jared, a year or two after I graduated. Yeah. You know, they were they had a he did every possession that way. Yeah, they had an interesting roster. We'll say that. So he he dabbled with the the old the system uh, as they the call system. it. Yeah, they yeah, call the system. system. So a little different than what you're talking about, but kind of like what we said anyway. Kind of what we said about football. Yeah, if you got a great player, they should be on the floor all the time. I don't know. Man, that's just you know. But yeah. you scored ninety points. It, I it mean, must if, be judging the, I'm, if I had to guess, I mean, they they hit six threes in the first quarter. The ending scores. I mean, I could imagine the score was probably what thirty. Well, let me tell the you, first quarter. 445 to go in the first. It was 13 to nothing. It was 24 to nothing at one point. Goodness. Yeah. I'm just, I yeah, I mean, send a prayer to that program. I, it's sad. I, I don't know how it's fallen this far. I, we don't need to stay on it too long. But no, no, it's no. it's a it's a bummer. Uh, and hopefully right. they do. Like I said, just a rebuilding year. Hopefully next yep. year they can look up a little nope. bit more. Nowhere to go but up, you know, and they, they yep. stick with it. They 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 did have a couple freshmen on the team, so and there were a couple bigger kids. So, you know, they could build on that. They just got to keep motivated cuz you don't want to get if you're getting blown out every game, it's pretty tough to have them yeah. come on back too. Right. Yep. Also before we wrap up this portion guys, just to quickly on some of the girl highlights, uh Morris down Weberville next door neighbors, the O's off to a 4-0 start with the girl side. Over Elsie beat Montrose 54-40, Eva Bates had 25 and New Lothrop pounded Mount Morris 58 to 12. Ouch. On the boys' side, it was uh, Perry picking up a win over East Jackson. Chesanine and Ovid Elsie both won, and we got Chesanine at Ovid Elsie this Friday night. So it's kind of neat nice. to be back in uh, in the gyms. So, it so. is cool. I, there's something as much as we love high school football, and we do. I mean, we we love high school football. I grew up. I mean, I, I'd be curious. I, I if I I would have to think about it, which one I liked more as a kid going to Nick and East field on Friday nights and, you know, watching from over the fence, mm -hmm. you know, playing football over by the bathrooms, you know, as a little kid, I loved going to basketball games when Frank Davis was still the coach. And then, you know, a little bit later, your dad, Jared, and, you know, before I started playing in high school, I loved going to the yeah. gym on Friday nights and watching those games. I would sit there, you know, some kids would be out in the hallway, running up and down the hallways, just playing, being idiots. I would do that for a minute. But then I wanted to be in that gym watching. I mean, we had some good teams Corona did in the mid-90s. So yeah. 
I'm saying that to say, yes, there is something special about Friday night lights. Mm -hmm. I think there's something equally special about being in that gym on Friday nights. It's cool. And I mean, Ted, it's got, it's got to be better than sitting in the bleachers, seeing your own breath. Right. I mean, sitting <laughs> in a nice warm well, that's a, that's a fact. I was going to go back to my playing days. You know, I really, I think that was probably a better football player, but I, if I had to pick a sport that I liked playing the most, it was basketball. I think, I think it was just cool, you know, running out of the locker room and going yeah. in the layup line. And then, you know, you didn't have a helmet on so you could see the fans, they could see you. And, you know, you felt like a star when you're out there in the starting lineup, they'd introduce you. It was, it was yeah. fun. It was yeah. fun. Yeah. But I mean, basketball is a, is a classic sport, man. I mean, it's, it's so much fun. I mean, there's a reason Matt, you've been playing it up until what a year or two ago, uh, your whole <laughs> entire life, even though you would probably admittedly say you're a better football player than you ever were a basketball player, but yeah. it's just, it's just such a fun sport that yeah. you just almost never want to hang the shoes up. No. Yeah. And it's one of those things you can continue to play too. You can't really play football. Yeah. Right. You could play some flag football or whatever, but right. once you're done in high school, if you don't go on to college, you're done, but you can play basketball for a long time. That, that set shot doesn't leave you. Does it? <laughs> That's right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, fellas, uh, this has been the uh, Prep Spotlight brought to you by Capital Sports Fieldhouse. Let's get to the meat and potatoes. Let's talk uh, a little uh, hottest team in the NFL yeah. right after this. Well, I tell you what, guys, last 24 hours since we watched that Vikings game, uh, I'm way past the drinking of the Kool-Aid stage. I mean, um, Ted, 1985, after winning a softball tournament, going to the bar <laughs> with his buddies, I, 12 Kool-Aids deep at this point. I, this team is so much fun. They are dialed in. They're, they, Like you said, they're the hottest team in the NFL. Yeah. Everyone's rowing in the same direction. So many of these players are just fun to watch. They always have a smile on their face. Seems like Sewell, Hutchison, Rodrigo, uh, you know, Goff even, Jamal Williams. It's just like it's it's a team I've had the most fun rooting for maybe in my entire life. Even, yeah. you know, more than maybe some of these Michigan teams that we've had. They just have yeah. so much fun. It makes you remember that football is a kid's game and – and Dan Campbell, I mean, I'll go out and say it. I tweeted it out. Home run higher. Yeah, I was going to bring that up. Say at this point, he's 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 proven himself. What I no matter what happens the rest of the year, the fact that he took a one and six team. I mean, we see it in the NFL every. I mean, John Beeline, the Cleveland Cavaliers, quit on him after like fifteen right. games. Yeah, uh, he had a one and six start after you know basically a one win season last year, and somehow, some way, this team never quit on him. And that's all you need to know about a coach. That's all you need to know about what goes on in that uh, franchise day to day uh, at the practice field in the film room. I mean, I'm so glad he's our coach, and I'm so glad that we kind of stumbled across this gold mine. One as a person, two as a coach. I'm just excited for the future of the Lions. The home run hire. I was definitely going to bring that up and be like, "Wow, we're, how excited were you?" I, you know, I'm not. I'm not all in on the home run hire. I still think you know he's maybe got some stuff to show as far as like in-game coaching and stuff like that. I'm not, I'm right. not trying to be super critical. I'm just not saying he's prime Bill Belichick when he had Tom Brady and stuff, but I, I am all in with everything else that you said, the culture that he's built and how he's kept this, this team together after starting off one in six, like you said, I mean, you know, we've seen many lions teams quit by this time, especially with guys like Patricia and other coaches, you know, if they had some rough stretches, they were done. They were checked out. This team was still fighting. I mean, they're legitimately in the playoff hunt. If they, mm -hmm. you know, if, if you know, they got a big one this weekend against the Jets, right. who are also fighting for the playoffs. And, you know, they'll be right in there if the Lions win that game. So, but yeah, all, all the guys that you listed there, at least the way I was kind of, you know, as you were listing them off, the way I was thinking about them. Jared Goff, yes, he was a number one draft pick, but he was kind of written off by the Rams, you know, in, the, in that trade for Stafford. Otherwise, it's a bunch of dudes that are are kind of like, you know, fighting for their like playoff or fighting for their like NFL right. name type of thing. You know what I mean? Like Jamal Williams. No one really knew who he was. DeAndre Swift. Is he going to actually stay healthy and be a good, you know, running back? Sewell, you know, a lot of people question that draft pick when the Lions made him. You, you know, so like it's a bunch of guys. It's not like a Calvin Johnson. It's not like when the Lions signed Reggie Bush. Right. It's not a Matthew Stafford who's putting up all these high passing numbers. You know, it's, it's a bunch of guys that are almost like trying to prove themselves like Dan Campbell, you know. So I, I'm not going all in and being like this, you know, Dan Campbell's the next Bill Parcells. He's proven that, you know, he can he can coach, though, and he, yeah. he can motivate a team. And he's got a bunch of dudes playing hard and having fun. I mean, you saw Jamison Williams going absolutely berserk after his mm -hmm. that first touchdown. So 
I'm I'm chugging some Kool Aid. I'm not I'm not bonging it yet, like you are, Jared. But I'm definitely <laughs> chugging some. Well, I will tell you, you got, and you know that I was on the edge uh, early on in Campbell's career there in Detroit on some of his uh, play calling. But I am on board. I'm I won't say home run higher, but I'll tell you what, he's my coach. I hope he's there to take him to the Super Bowl someday. Yep. I also. You know, I mean, you got to give him credit. He's got some of the biggest balls of any NFL coach going for that huge fake punt at that time. That's going for the jugular, going for the the Sewell tackle eligible, you know, not yep. having him lead the blocking into the line, but to actually catch the pass. It was brilliant. Now, I know you got to give some of that a big portion of that to the offensive coordinator, but Campbell was on board with it. Yeah. But the, the other thing I just wanted to get on the table here right now is uh, and there, there's debate. And there's there's two sides to looking at it. But as far as I'm concerned, Jared Goff is my quarterback. He's 28 years old. He's throwing, for the most part, pretty consistent balls right on the money. Yeah, he'll have his moments just like any other quarterback. But you know what? The least of my concerns right now is quarterback. I Okay, if I draft one in the <clears throat> seventh round, sixth round, you know, maybe make a little project for a year or two. Okay, I could see that. But Jared Goff, I think, can, I think Jared Goff can take them to the yeah. Super Bowl. I really do. Yeah. If they I, fill in a few I was more wrong. pieces. I said it, you know, all leading it in hard knocks. I kept reiterating it. You know, whenever you guys would get excited, I would say at the <laughs> end of the day, Jared Goff's our quarterback. I mean, just look at the stats. 3,352 yards, eighth in the NFL, 22 passing touchdowns, fifth in the NFL, 61.2 QBR, sixth. I, how do you argue the stats? Yeah, he's got <laughs> some help. He's got finally has an offense around him, maybe a coach right. and a coaching staff that actually believes in him. Yeah. Uh, for once, but yeah, he's proven to me I, he, each week. He, you know, if this is like a hundred percent, he's our quarterback of the future. I think he's at like 70% right now, you know, maybe a couple bad weeks could drop him back down to 50%. We're right. unsure, but each week he's getting better and better. Uh, and he's just my favorite part. And this is maybe, you know, over said, I said it already. I just like how rootable these guys are. Yeah, you, yeah. you love yeah. rooting for him. Jared Goff. There's nothing to not like about him. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's just, I'm glad he's on our team. I mean, you think about these other teams out there, you know, if you were a Cleveland Brown fan, I mean, what are you watching on NFL Sundays for? What are you, right. what are you happy about with a, with a franchise like that and who you have leading them forward? Yeah. I'm just happy that everything about this franchise is going forward. And I'll be the first one to admit it. Jared Goff. He, I was wrong. He proved me wrong. He proved us all wrong. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I like the word you used rootable. That, that's I, I like that. I don't know if that's a real word, any, but that that's kind of my my long soliloquy that lasted five minutes or whatever. That that's kind of what I was trying to say. It's we have a bunch of players that are rootable. Yeah, you know, you like Jamal Williams because he's not some Ezekiel Elliott type of running back. Yeah. You know, like playing for the Cowboys. You like right. Jared Goff because he was written off by the Rams, and you know now he's playing well. And dudes like Sewell and you know Rodrigo and obviously Hutchinson. We love, we love Hutchinson. Um, for, for other reasons now he's proven that he is actually a stud, you know, not just because yeah. he went to Michigan, but they're rootable. You, you like this team. And then you got a coach that, you know, play, you know, coaches like he's still playing, you know, it, it's like he didn't, you know, take the pads off or something. So the thing with golf, I'm not, I, I've said the same thing every week, whatever. I'm not 100% like he should be the guy going forward. He's playing, he's having a hell of a season. So I'm not taking anything away from him. You said 22 touchdowns. I saw yeah. 20 of them were at home. So he's still got some stuff to prove right. on the road, and they're going to the Jets mm -hmm. this yeah. weekend. So I, I think as much as we're – I mean, look at Ted's shirt. He's even Honolulu blue. As much as we're – He's matching. As much as we're loving you know, the Lions right now, I think this weekend will really prove if they're actually for real. If they go to the Jets – and beat them, you know, then it's like, all right, you know, fill that, fill that cup up with the, the Kool-Aid, but golf, the only thing he's, he's getting paid a lot of money. He's getting paid right. like 32 million a year or something like that. That would be the only thing I would say, because if they're going to legitimately build a Super Bowl contender, they do still need some other defenders, you know, maybe, you know, just some more depth pieces. And if you're having to pay your quarterback 30, 32 million, that, that's a lot of money. Yeah. I, but if he's playing like this, then, you know, it's a going rate, isn't it? For well, a I just wonder, you know, I wonder if in a Not year guys on their rookie deal, up, you know. would, would it, would he take a pay cut or what, right. what would the market be for him? Yeah. I, I'd be curious to see that if he keeps up the same production, I mean, it'd almost be like he kind of deserves it. If he keeps it up at the rate he's going this year, if he um, takes, if he takes the Lions to the playoffs after starting one in six, and then, you know, say they have another good season next year. I don't know how you couldn't pay him top dollar. You know yeah. what I mean? So that's the only thing I would say.
And he yeah, says, in, and he said in his post game, you know, how he feels things changing, how he just, this last six weeks, he feels like it's just a totally different team, totally different locker room. I mean, maybe that's a thing to, to sing his praises about the most. I mean, you got Lions fans, 60 plus years old, like Ted, who've been saying SOL, like every game, every, yeah. I mean, he's got so much negativity in this franchise and he seemed yeah. to have turned it around. I mean, say what you will, Stafford, great quarterback. We all love him. Hall of Famer, probably, you know, Lions legend. Jersey's going to be retired someday, probably. It never felt like the culture really swung around when right. we, he was here. Maybe a, a good year here, and you know, maybe we're being a little bit too high on the Kool Aid with this Lions team. But I agree; it seems like something's really switched in this franchise. First of all, I think we should be as high as we want to be on the Kool Aid because we haven't had that chance yeah. very, very no. often. I mean, yep. let's let's face it: this team, it, 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 like you said, rootable. I mean, they're fun to watch. What but they won? What uh, was it? Five now? Five, or out, five out of six. Out of six? Yeah, yeah I'm six. I mean, it's and they're playing entertaining football, um, scoring points. Yeah, I mean, it, it, what I mean, they're scoring points. There, the defense has got to bend, don't break, force a turnover, and have yep. some big picks here and there. You know, Hutchinson has a player to a game. I will still say that's definitely probably our Achilles' heel, the pass rush. I mean, it is. Kirk Cousins still had one hell of a day when you look yeah. at a stat line and yeah. you're watching that game. They kind of shot themselves in the foot on that idiotic play call before half. Uh, yeah. Oh, I, really? I mean, if it was third and goal with ten seconds left, maybe you pull that one out of the trick uh, trick book. But first and goal, I, you're you have Dalvin Cook in the backfield. We saw him the previous touchdown just sauce a guy in wide open yeah. field on his way into the end zone. I just think they textbook overthought that. Um, yeah. But still, I, just what what more can you say about this franchise? I'm just so excited going forward, man. Yeah, yeah and it's the type of thing too where if if they're gonna play like this. And always be in contention, even if, say, this year they end up not making the playoffs. But especially if they make the playoffs this year, I really don't know how, at minimum, next year or for a year or two, how you can't be on the Dan Campbell train. Because it's like, what else are you going to do? You're going to go hire another Matt Patricia, you know, or are you going to go try and bring in another, uh, you know, Marty Morningweg type of dude or even Jim Schwartz, you know, something like some up, up and coming coordinator right. or something like that. It's like if Dan Campbell is at minimum getting the team to play like this as a Lions fan, what else can you ask for? You know what I mean? Like 100 percent. Yeah, I mean, they, he's 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 got him playing playoff caliber football in December. They, they bought into it, you know, and the cliche is confidence breeds confidence. Are you watching a team right now that's playing with confidence, you know? Even yeah. when they give up a big play defensively, they'll come right back and make a big play defensively. Yeah. I mean, it, just fun to watch. Yep. It, it is. And, and, I mean, we'd be remiss if we didn't mention, I mean, we talk about the play calling. Ben Johnson yeah, yeah. really culminated this week where everyone's kind of singing his praises. He's, he's incredible. I mean, it's inspiring to watch him. I tweeted that out. Original thoughts. Uh, original play calls, you know, lots of pulling linemen, different formations. I mean, I love the play third of the third and short we had where he had a Monra in the background and or in the in the in the backfield, excuse me, and uh Jamal Williams at like a fullback three point stance position and got right. like 10 <laughs> yards off of it. I mean, it reminds me of like the 49ers offense. I mean, they were dialed in all day. Every third down, they got it. Felt like it felt like we yeah. never were stopped. I don't remember punting. Uh, I remember, you know, us missing a field goal. I remember one drive in the third quarter, you know, kind of stalling out. But other than that, it seemed like we were just rolling. And, I mean, talk about diamond in the rough. Look at this guy's background. So he was a tight ends coach for Boston College in 2011. Then he went to named offensive assistant for the Miami Dolphins in 2012. Uh, that's where he met Dan Campbell. Uh, promoted to assistant quarterbacks coach in 2013. Then tight ends coach right after Dan Campbell was named the interim head coach uh, for the Dolphins. You know, was under Adam Gase for a while it, uh, there. And then in 2018, finally was the receivers coach. From there, basically came to the Lions, tight end coach. Now look at him. He's like the hottest offensive coordinator we'll in, in the league. And, you know, I knock on wood, hopefully we can hold on to him. It seems like he's yeah. going to be a big-time head coaching, uh, you know, prospect this offseason. Just what a fun guy to watch call plays. I mean, it makes me laugh sometimes watching his play calls. I mean, you mentioned the Sewell uh, out route, biggest play of the game. He took some yeah. balls, and it was just so smart. It, it's yeah. it's a joy to watch him. Well, and I, and I saw someone tweet out that the play, I didn't notice this, but the play before that play, they had Sewell lined up as an eligible receiver, but he just pulled and blocked. Right. So it's almost like he knew that if, if yeah. this scenario comes up, we're going to pull this play out where we're going to throw to Sewell, but let's, you know, set the defense up with this, you know, before. So, right. He's just yeah. like genius. And it's kind of, I, to me, like what Ted has said, but before about having an assistant, like a, um, 
an experienced assistant for Campbell to help with clock management and timeouts and stuff like that. Just experienced stuff. Maybe this is the kind of offensive coordinator that Campbell needs. We saw the Lions improved last year when Campbell took over play calling, mm -hmm. you know, so he obviously knows offense. But maybe this is what that. Campbell just needs. Campbell is like the culture guy. He's yeah. going to get people to buy in. He's going to get guys to come. I mean, you got Lamar Jackson out here liking and retweeting Lions stuff. So it's all, you know, people around the league are noticing this. So that that's Campbell's job. Do that stuff. And then if you've got someone like yeah. Ben Easy. Johnson to call your offense, I mean, pay this guy all the money. He can be like Eric Bieniemy and, you know, Andy Reid. Andy Reid obviously is very offensive minded, but, you know, Pay an OC. I don't care. Like anymore, you know. like the, the NFL, you have to have a good offensive coordinator. You have to. So if you found one, pay him as much money because you know immediately, immediately teams are going to start offering him head coach jobs yeah, yeah. if he keeps I, doing this. I think the Fords have the money. They can pay yes. him. And and when Jared read off the resume there, it makes me feel a little better. He obviously has a bond with Dan Campbell. Yep. Right? They're friends. Yeah, and, and that's a big. I, part we all it. love this. I mean, it's funny how they they we basically everybody on this entire franchise was outlined during Hard Knocks. I don't remember a single second Ben Johnson was on the screen. So right, it's kind of funny that he's he ends up being the real uh, star of this entire thing. I mean, Jared Goff has said it himself. He's 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 the mastermind behind this whole thing. I mean, his his game plans every week. I mean, this offense. Ted, you kind of mentioned how it's a little bit crazy that Jonathan Vilma said this was like the the greatest show on turf offense Rams how it was up up with them I mean that was maybe a little bit of a stretch but his sentiment was there that this is a fun offense they everybody's involved uh yeah. and it's just fun to watch week to week it and is. that's just again I mean we didn't maybe expect their offense to be like this coming into the season so I'm not like trying to say I'm some savant or whatever but this is why I was like we got to have Jamison Williams yeah um, a lot of people were saying that I wasn't the only one saying that but you know seeing what St. Brown was last year as a rookie it was like dude if you put Jamison Williams yeah. next to St. Brown and if golf can play well this offense could be to take Jared's word electric and yeah. I mean opening drive Jamison Williams boom deep yeah. ball you know he's he's still obviously rusty he's still getting back from injury but you can see like what what can be there you know and, well, and you you know one thing i'll say real quick just uh you, how about ford field and the detroit lions fans showing up showing only. out for a loot team with a losing record i mean standing room only that was the best crowd you saw all weekend in the nfl yeah uh it's just it's cool to see that it feels like it's been a really long time since we we've really experienced that other than maybe a monday night game against the packers here or something like that i mean seems like if, if we had three more home games the rest of the year they'd all be sold out uh, I, go ahead. I was just going to say, I've told you guys this before. I've, I've went over it with my brother, George. I think your dad, John would be on board. If the lions, if they make the super bowl while I'm not using a Walker, I'm not, I may not go to the game, but I'm going to that city you got and to. I'm going to party like it's 1999. I'm, yep. I'm going to get into it. You got to, I mean, especially, Absolutely. you know, I mean, you're, you're a little older than us, so you, you've you yes. watched a little more. But even me, I mean, I've been, my whole life, I'm almost 40, and I've never seen it. So it would be like, am I ever going to see this again? You know, I, I I was texting a buddy the other day, and he was saying him and his wife are thinking about, um, like, booking tickets in hotels for L.A. where the national championship game is going to be. Right. Because they were like, man, Michigan has a pretty good shot to make it right. to the national title there. game. Yeah. Should we just go ahead and – book a hotel and buy tickets now, just get the insurance and stuff like that. Sure. And I was like, that could be a once in a lifetime thing. Last time Michigan was in a national title game of football, 22, 25 years ago already, you mm -hmm. know, yeah. who knows when that's going to happen again, so especially with the lions. So yes, you, you better go. Nice. Uh, so how do we feel about these next three games? I mean, at New York jets, at Carolina, at green Bay, the way I look at it is just get us to the green Bay game, you know, win us these next two. We'll take our chances against Green Bay. If we lose that game, I'm not going to be sitting here crying about it. I mean, they battled. They won the games they were supposed to win down the stretch. Green Bay, Aaron Rodgers at home, Lambeau Field, you know, cold weather. You kind of are going into that probably already down seven points. So just just find your way somehow, some way. Win these next two weeks. And if you end up losing to Green Bay uh, the last week of the season, it is what it is. That's there's, a fourth, there's a fourth team there, isn't there? Don't they oh, have four games one? left? I, I thought. Probably, yeah. Let me find it. So I think no, they're six and seven. They play the, yeah. Bears. Oh, they're the Bears. Yep. I missed that one. So yeah, I, I think that to me, obviously the last three will be big, but it's this Jets game. Yeah. It's this weekend. If they can go to New York, because same thing, the Jets are in the same spot. They need to win out basically to make the playoffs. 
And the Jets have a really good defense too. They're actually like pretty good team. So if they can go to New York and keep this this train rolling, Panthers, Bears, Packers, you should almost like you almost see it, don't even have to sweat them. I mean, you have to, but yeah. yeah. Can you imagine going to Lambeau with the playoffs on the line? Must win, you're in. Oh my yeah. God. <laughs> I hope Jordan Love is playing. If that's the case, was, that will be Aaron, if Aaron Rodgers uh, is somehow, some way playing that game. That would be his one last fu to Detroit. Before sure would. Call it a career, wouldn't it? I mean, it, it would give us a classic. I own you uh, on his if he yeah. runs for a score or something like that, or on the sideline, dude. Uh, It'd be awful. The few Detroit fans in there, man. Yeah, <laughs> but no, they're all winnable games. Kind of to answer your question, all winnable yes. games. So I, it almost feels like they have to win out to make the playoffs, but. Yeah, I feel like you said if get to the Packers game where you know basically the playoffs are on the line. Yep, and I'm feeling good. And and, and hopefully they don't read way. read too much of their press clippings. I'm kind of worried about right. that. This is the week we're all kind of gushing over them. Yeah, everybody's gushing over them. You just sometimes wonder about that, especially with a young team. Yeah, uh, you know we'll see. I, I'm if anyone's going to keep them, you know, from doing that, it's Dan Campbell. But yeah. you got to worry job. about it. That's his job, and you're right, Jared. I mean. Karma is something that's very unpredictable, you know, and they've always they're playing pretty well because nobody's expecting them to win, even though they were favored in that game against the Vikings. And I can see why that is some terrible defense they play, maybe yeah. worse than what the Lions were. That was, that was that, pretty that, bad. And that's kind of my point, not to keep getting back to this, but you know, the Jaguars, the Jaguars defense, not very good. Right. Vikings defense, trash. So let's see how they do against the Jets before before we're filling that bong up with the Kool-Aid. Yeah. Well, I've, I've got the bong ready. It's right Get over it here. Ready. I've got it ready. It's ready for to be your bong, yeah. <laughs> All right, well, you talked about Michigan possibly making it the national championship game. One team is Ferris State and uh, Tony Anise. I Once saw again. just a minute ago four fan buses completely sold out for the, the ride down to McKinney, Texas, maybe the greatest high school stadium in the country. Uh, yeah. I just want to put on the table, we've talked about it before. We, you know, Tony's our guy, man. Yep. I mean, we all know Tony. We know what kind of coach he is. I really think that, it, you know, some division one schools, CMU particularly back when they hired the special teams coach from the lions there for a couple of years, that should have been Tony's job at that time. I think he did interview for it. Terrible I'm, hire. Uh huh. Bonamago. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not sure there's going to be many more chances. And if there isn't, so be it. Uh, Tony has stamped himself as one of the greatest coaches in college football and uh, he's made quite a legacy of himself there in Ferris. And let's hope they can go get the natty this Saturday. It's fun to watch. Yeah. I mean, the amount of wins that he's piled up to be in back-to-back um, D2 national title games. And like we've said before, he took Ferris kind of from towards the bottom of the GLIAC when he came in. Right. And he's built him into what Grand Valley was at the beginning of the 2000s yeah. when back when I was there. I mean, that, that's that's where he has them. And you, you have to put him up there with, with the list of all, all the great coaches in college football. And I'm yeah. just, you know, we've asked him. He's been on the pod a couple times, and we've asked him about college. And obviously he's maybe – he's not going to give us all the details, you know, on the podcast. But I would just be curious at this point in his career, um, you know, where he has Ferris. You know, they're established. Mm -hmm. You know, they're one of the best programs in D2. Would he want to go – to another program and maybe rebuild a Western Michigan or, you know, something like that. Like, yeah, you know, maybe the challenge would be there. Maybe that'd right. be part of it, I but live. why it's almost like, why, you know? Yeah. So, you know, and I, I was, I felt pretty strongly about this. I tweeted it out, you know, when the Western news kind of broke who, who they were targeting as candidates, bunch of no guys that have never coached a head coached a game in their life. Um, it is what it is at this point. Yeah, I mean, he's, he's he's a little bit older. He still definitely has what it takes to flip around a Mac school. I, I don't understand why they're not targeting him, why they're not going after him. Maybe we'll never know. Maybe he's not interested. I, I don't know. Right. Uh, but like you said, if he just stays at Ferris, I mean, it's going to be Tony and East Field. Uh, yeah, if yeah. he gives it five more, if he's a few more years like this, I mean, it's Tony and East Field, probably Tony and East Press Box. Uh, right. You know, freaking, he's going to have a legacy spot there. So why not keep just winning these D2 titles? I mean, it's fun to see. And, and you know, it's just awesome. People, I that's one of my favorite things. People always bring up Fair State, you know, around the office or whoever. That's my favorite thing to tell them. He's a Corona grad. It almost yeah. blows their mind. They can't imagine <laughs> somebody so successful coming from Corona. So, <laughs> well, after working with about. you, I understand it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But, you know, yeah, again, just uh, anybody that w just wanted to look at Tony's coaching resume from his high school stops all the way to where he is now, it's a no-brainer. 
you know, yeah. it's hard to believe that he didn't get that D1 right. opportunity. I, I think I know the answer to this, and I don't know why I'm kind of blinking. Is he in the MHSAA Hall of Fame? Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. I, I mean, I figured, yes, obviously. So he'll be in he'll be in every possible Hall of Fame that he can be, you know what I mean, by by the time it's all said and done. So you, you can't take anything away from him. Pretty damn good coaching tree there with his dad and himself, you know, and I know his brothers help out a lot too. So it's, I, he, uh, it's a football family. You know, yeah, the one thing – I- Go ahead, Jared. You know, he has one hell of a coaching tree. Like I said, it's even yeah. funny, man. I mean, to Dan Roan and I think like some uh Coach Groves, I can't I can't remember his first name from Grand Rapids West Catholic, both won state titles this year. They just both happen to be Tony and East's coaching tree as well. I mean, mm-hmm. then you know he's got two other coaches, Ryan Brady and Coach Sparky and the Gliak. I mean, right. Zeitman what uh went to Jenison, uh great coach in himself, great offensive blind coach. I, I he's just who knows? There's probably so many more that I don't even know about, yeah. uh, but it just it's impressive. That's maybe the most impressive thing. If anything, I bet a bunch of former players are now either like finishing or like getting into coaching, you know what mm-hmm. I mean? Because their football career is probably done. Yeah. So one of got, them, uh, Jason Vanderlaan, uh, Rockford offensive coordinator, former Har- Harlan Hill winner. There you go. Yeah, there you one. go. Yeah. yeah. I mean, they're, it's going to keep going. And, you know, a couple a couple players or few players, handful in, in the NFL too. So that's impressive. The one thing I was going to say not to, I mean, we're, we're extending this a little bit, but I'd be curious to hear from coaches um, that coach in the Mac versus D2, you know, cause I'm, I'm trying to like formulate what I'm, what I'm thinking here. So like, if you, if you can recruit a player to D2, they're, they're obviously very good football players. There's some in, in the NFL, but they're like D2 football players. Whereas like guys you're recruiting to the Mac are almost like fringe could go play at Michigan State. So why, you know, I feel like it'd be easier to recruit guys to Ferris State than to recruit guys to Eastern Michigan. You know what I mean? Because if, yeah. if you're if you're recruiting guys to Eastern Michigan, those are guys that could probably, you know, go go play at Michigan State for a year or two, and then by their junior year, they're starters. Right. Whereas like D two, you know, you're you're probably not going to play at even like a Notre Dame or you know right. like a, even in Illinois. So you go to D two and you go crush it there. I don't know. I would just be curious to hear like the the recruiting philosophy. I maybe, guess, maybe, the he's actually just said an interview interview. I think I think last week he was talking about how he's, want guys, he's guys with heart, right? Yeah, I mean Brady Rose. No, no. Dude, anyone with a with a brain knew that, that kid was a football player. Right. I don't care what his combine numbers were. I don't care what it was. I mean, look at he's a freshman. He's he's making big time plays for Ferris. Yep. Uh, sophomore, excuse me. I mean, he's he's returning kicks. He's he's catching like eight balls in playoff games. I mean, uh, and that's he, he, he probably had out. he he's probably had no D one offers, right? I mean, no. I don't know. Yeah, not so. maybe I don't know if Ferris doesn't doesn't offer him. Who knows if he even lands on a D two school? It, it's right. just crazy, man. He he, the obvious players that a lot of you know coaches overlook. He seems to always nail them. Yeah, I mean, Cy Barnett I, from Charlotte, uh, and then he had playing up Williamson. You know, I knew him since I was a little kid. Uh, ended up he's fifth year played his last year at Davenport this last year same sort of thing man just you know nobody saw what was coming and I think he started for four years at Ferris at slot mm-hmm. it's just impressive he does yeah. a great job recruiting man yeah. well good luck to Tony and the Bulldogs as they head to the national championship game against uh, Colorado School of Mines that'll be taking place Saturday and you know again we'll wish him luck and hopefully he gets the three-point bump since we've talked about him for a good period here Go Bulldogs. Uh, Army Navy, fun game as always. You know, first overtime game in 122 meetings. It's always a neat <laughs> tradition after the after the you know the, the uh, conference championship games are played. The following Saturday's Army right. Navy. It's just fun to see. Yeah, I always laugh at the passing statistics after that game. <laughs> no kidding. Well, I, I forget which one. I think it was Army's. Was one for one. But that one was a touchdown. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, what a fun game it was. All-time yep. game. Navy fumbled it. I mean, one thing that was kind of wild, if you were watching that game live, you know, they kept showing all these different sky cams and 360 views of the stadium. And then the biggest play of the game, a fumble right at the inch line uh, in overtime. We had, like, two looks. One of them was, like, the pylon cam that you couldn't even see out of. And the other one was, like, the above. It was, like, a view you couldn't even see what was going on. So yeah. uh, that was kind of frustrating. And, if I and you know, I, not like I'm some TV production whiz, but that just seemed like a problem. Uh, mm-hmm. You got to cover the game first and foremost. So a big time lesson. Um, but no, I, what a great game. It's a shame that uh, Ken Niamatolo, probably pronounced his name wrong, head coach for Navy, you know, was basically fired after it. Cause I've yeah. always liked him. Uh, and it's just, it's just such a great game, such a great tradition. I've always wanted to go to it. Ted, that should be number one on your list ahead of a Lions Super Bowl. 
Uh, no way. Well, it, it, in all due no respect, all, all due respect, I, I salute the service people. Absolutely would be a fun game to go to, but Lion Super Bowl supersedes that by far to me. Sorry. Yeah. It would <laughs> uh, be a cool game to go to, though. It, it would be. Um, just real quick, guys, Tad, news about Mike Leach. Uh, just yeah. yeah. Terrible, terrible deal. And did you guys have any surprises on the uh, Heisman at all? with the four quarterbacks. Oh, and I'm glad you brought Williams that up though. It. I yeah. Caleb Williams. I, I want him so bad for the lions. I know he's got one more year of college mm -hmm. every time I was so impressed with his speech and, and people was, it maybe wasn't the perfect speech, but a lot of times you'll see those Heisman guys that win it, they go up, they say, uh, you have one minute, two minute speech. Now it doesn't seem like they put really too much thought into it. He brought his entire offensive line there. You know, eight guys mm -hmm. that, that played for him this year. Uh, he gave shout out special shout out to almost every single guy. I loved how he ended it, basically walking through his entire journey as a quarterback and all the kind of adversity he's faced and how kids facing that same sort of thing, you know, keep pushing. Uh, I'm just impressed with him. I, I really, really want him uh, as a Lions fan. I don't care what it yeah. takes. Yeah, and it would work out perfectly because I'm, I'm pretty sure golf is he signed <laughs> through next season. <laughs> so there we go. Yeah, go there ahead you and go. Take, take us to the playoffs for a couple years, Jared, and then we're. And then we're gonna draft Caleb Williams and not not pay you thirty million dollars. Right. Unfortunately, but, I don't think they're gonna get a chance to get him unless the Lions yeah. completely fall apart next year, right? Yeah, that's yeah. that's true. They might miss out on the Caleb Williams. But all right, we got Tedertainment coming up tonight. Before we do though, uh, any final any comments on Michigan, Michigan State at this stage of basketball season? You want to table oh, the, that for another time? Yeah, the one thing I'll say, I, Michigan basketball. I feel like if they're not gonna try to, to recruit a point guard that's going to stay you know we're, we were used to seeing point guards for so long mm -hmm. trey burke and you know xavier simpson derek and, and derek walton and all these dudes stay for a couple of years if they're going to have that system that juan seems to have it's it's working he's doing well where they're getting a new transfer point guard every year i feel like it's always going to be a struggle these first couple months while the yeah. team is kind of figuring stuff out so it's just kind of frustrating as a fan, you know, when, when we were used to watching those. We really those were spoiled, cards. you know, and I never really thought about it until you just said that. But we point guard you for like 12 years there. Right. Uh, that those guys were, were walking through Ann Arbor. And Darius, Darius Morris before those. Yeah, guys. even before that. You're right. Uh, no. So, yeah, it is a bummer. I don't like, you know, that's what's kind of hard to follow this Michigan team and his new players every year. I mean, Jet Howard. Fun little wrinkle that he's, you know, Jawan Howard's son seems to be the real deal. I mean, 15 yeah. points per game. Uh, people are kind of panicking, you know, Michigan and Michigan State fans kind of throughout this year already. I don't yeah. worry about it, especially Michigan. I mean, what more do we need to see? They they show up every March. I mean, yeah, we saw right. that last year. I mean, we still have Hunter Dickinson, who's going to be, you know, definition of a veteran uh, right. come March Madness. So I, I'll take our chance. I think we got a good coach. He's going to, you know, coach them pretty close to their their maximum potential. I mean, I'd say the same thing for Michigan State as well. I mean, just it's all coming up to when I really start watching is that first Michigan Michigan State game, which will be January seventh, Saturday, yep. two thirty p.m. I mean, it should be a fun one. I actually was looking ahead of the schedule, Ted. I just want to give you a heads up on this one. Okay. Saturday, February eighteenth, nine p.m. start. You might want to set the DVR uh, for that one right now, so you so you don't miss it. Uh, but <laughs> but as for Michigan State, I'll just say this real quick. I mean, you're going to find out who they are. They really are a Jekyll and Hyde type team. You know, one day they look great, beating Kentucky. The next day they look terrible, uh, losing to Northwestern. But we'll find out who they are over this upcoming uh, once that stretch, January seventh comes. I mean, they got Michigan, then they they're at number twenty two Wisconsin, then at number eighteen Illinois. And then verse number one, Purdue. So if you're a Michigan State fan, just hope you kind of tread water until then. Then you'll find out who who this team really is right around there. Yeah. The only couple comments I have about the point guard. I mean, I watched the Minnesota game in this uh, Doug McDaniel. He looks pretty damn good. He's fast yeah. as hell. He's got some sweet moves. So maybe he's our guy we can watch coming down the road. And Michigan State, you know, you know, I'm an Izzo guy. He'll have them ready to play. They still play a real, real tough early season schedule that I think gets them ready for the Big Ten. So yeah. I think both teams will be back in the in the tournament, obviously, and it's going to be fun to watch, as yeah. always. Get us through this cold winter when we get to March. Yeah. Yeah. All right, I, I guess that's an, that, well, one final thing. How sad is it that Pistons, Cade Cunningham now is done right. for the year, shin yeah. surgery. I don't like the sound of shin surgery. It sounds I'm like no something expert. that he's going to be dealing with for the rest of his career. I mean, yes. you know, hopefully not, but it just sounds like that. You know, when you hear of people who have uh, shin splints, I just mm -hmm. remember people in high school who had shin splints. Every time they would run, they would right. be like, ah, my shins, you know, so I don't Painful. know. Yeah, it does yeah. suck because he was supposed to be the guy. Him and Jaden Ivey were supposed to be the guys that were going to turn things around, um, you know, for the Pistons. and. 
you know, now, and he was looking good too. He was looking yeah, like he yeah, could be a star. Good. So, yeah. Yeah. I mean, you just hope, I don't know, advanced, you know, medical uh, science. It seems like these guys always come back stronger. Yeah. It seems like, uh, but yeah, I would say shin surgery, definitely a little bit scary, um, yeah. but it is what it is. I mean, at this point now it's, it's kind of just, we'll see where this season leads us. Hopefully some of these other guys, you know, maybe take advantage of the situation. Ivy grows a little bit. Uh, and we'll see at the end of the year, you know, yeah. if, if we happen to be in the bottom four uh, or bottom three, excuse me. I mean, we'll we'll take our chances at that number one pick and a generational day of player uh, in okay. when when Banana. So, yep, there you go. All right. That's uh, that's our sports talk. We'll get into a little short uh, all time Christmas movies on Tedertainment tonight right after this. I'll just start. So I'll be honest. It's I said at the very top of the pod. It's putting together this list is almost impossible. Spoiler alert: there, there's not many good Christmas movies out there. I mean, oh. I was really impressed with the draws for a lot of these. To be honest, come on. I just got to point out some of them that I found absolutely horrendous. Real quick: the Rudolph movies, the the Saint Nick, uh, the little I don't even know animatronic cartoon, whatever you want to call it. Those are so bad. Um, it's claymation. Claymation. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I'm out on those, man. I, I, you couldn't pay me enough to watch those now that I'm an adult. I, I hated them as a kid, so it's even worse. Uh, Matt, I'm hoping this isn't on your list. Uh, if it is, maybe save your comments on it. Uh, the Polar Express. Uh, oh, solid storyline. You know, it's cool. That's got the Owasso connection. Uh, the animation will, will give you nightmares. I, I don't know who signed off on the animation. It makes the movie 10 times worse. You know, if it had good animation, like Wreck-It Ralph animation or something, uh, I probably would love it. But uh, I just can't look past the terrible an animation. Uh, but all right, I'll start off. Number one, uh, it's obvious. Oh, slam dunk. I mean, Elf. Genuinely a great movie. You know, not even just a Christmas movie. It'll make you laugh. It'll make you cry. I mean, it's got Will Ferrell in his prime. Just, just a, a perfect movie. We can quote it, you know, all day and night. I've seen that movie probably a solid fifty times. I don't even watch it necessarily only when it's Christmas time. I mean, just a perfect, perfect film. No, that, that's that's a good pick. Uh, that's got to be on everyone's list. I, I think, like, like you said, you could watch that year round, and that that's when you know it's a good movie, not just a Christmas movie, not one that you only watch this time of year. You could watch that in July, and you know you would still love it. So yeah. I, I can respect that. You're going to love my number one pick, though. It's Polar Express. Oh, my. <laughs> that is my number one favorite Christmas movie. And there, there's others. And so you you said making this list was hard because there's not a lot of good Christmas movies. See, yeah, I'm the other way around. I, I, it's hard for me to narrow down a top yeah. three for me. So I just for me with Polar Express, I think the movie is really cool. Like you said, the storyline and all that kind of stuff. I actually like the animation. I think it's it's kind of unique or cool. It's kind of like a nostalgia thing. I think that's a lot of it with with Christmas movies. The Polar Express was my favorite Christmas book as a kid. I yeah. loved reading that book. I would read it over and over and over at Christmas time. So then when a movie came out, it was like this is even cooler. So yeah. it has that kind of connection. Um, you know, the the whole train experience and all that kind of stuff I like too. So the Polar Express is my number one. All right. Well, um, when I was a youngster, you guys know that was a long, long time ago. Every spring, couldn't wait to watch The Wizard of Oz, right? It came on once a year. You can only watch it once a year. Well, I'm going to I'm gonna start out with the classic A Christmas Story with Ralphie wow. and his writer BB gun. It's replayed every year for 24-hour marathon on Christmas Eve on TNT or TBS or both of them. But the whole story is just classic. The way they did it, it holds up, you know, because it's a nostalgic look back at when Ralphie was a kid and wanted that BB gun. It's just tremendous. I love that movie. So I, I put that there, number one. And then I'll probably go number two, uh, Christmas Vacation with Chevy Chase. Uh -huh. I love Christmas Vacation. I look forward to that every year. That's another one that holds up like Elf. You can watch at any time of the year. If you're flipping through the dial and it's on, you'll stop and watch it because it has some classic moments, uh, especially with his cousin Eddie dropping in. That's always classic. So it's always the cousin Eddie thing. I don't know. Christmas Vacation, you know, the, the whole National Lampoon's, uh -huh. uh, you know, their whole lineup, I feel like is definitely a generational thing. I, right. I never, never, never like, bought clicked in. with, never clicked no, with me. No, it never I, did with me either. I, I get it, you know, for the, you know, the Christmas vacation, I get all that, the Griswolds and all that, but. And Chevy Chase is my era, you know, right. so I guess that's, that's another reason. That's your era. So, you know, I, I can understand your love for cousin Eddie, my number two though. So a generational thing, 
could easily be my number one, but it's Home Alone. And mm. it's because I was Kevin McAllister when that movie came out. I mean, I was that age. I thought, <laughs> this is me. This is what I would do if I got left home alone. All the gadgets, all the booby traps, right. everything that he did, all you know, eating all the ice cream, you know, when he was home alone. I'm sitting there his age saying, this is exactly what I would do if I was left home alone. This would be the coolest thing ever. And I remember vividly my dad coming home with Pizza Hut one night on a Friday night with the VHS of Home Alone that he probably bought at Meyer or wherever he bought it, you know. I, I like remember being so excited to watch Home Alone and eat pizza. So that sounds that, like I a so, magical night. Anything with could pizza could easily man. be my number one, but no, Home Alone. Home Alone is it, it is a good flick. Flawless, flawless movie. I said I already know you love it because of what is it, Marv and uh, just the, any anything Italian mob related. The fact yeah. that 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 guy's in it, you just love it. Uh, Daniel Stern and Joe Pesci. Yep, Joe Pesci. I love it. Uh, it's a great, great flick. Uh, number two, this is, might surprise you guys. Uh, it's a Wonderful Life. I mean, Ooh. I've seen this movie probably thirty times at this point. Wow. George George Bailey, uh, just a legend. I mean, he, he just kept putting his dreams on hold for his family uh, and his for his town. Uh, I will say it, it is a long flick. It seems like I start it at like eight o'clock on Christmas Eve, and it's it's next thing you know, it's like one o'clock, and the thing is still going. It, it just seems like it never ends. Uh, I will say that it has to be the color version. Uh, I love the oh, purist okay. uh, who will say, uh, "Oh, it's got to be black and white." That's what the artists intended, or something. Or yeah, no, it's just they didn't have the technology. It, it would have been in color, um, just didn't have the technology. <laughs> Uh, just a great message. Uh, just yep. a feel good story. Um, you know, Bedford Falls, maybe the worst town that's ever been created. But uh, <laughs> other than that, it's just a, a great story. And it's kind of a fun look back at the old timey, uh, you know, way of life back then. So yep. number two, it's a wonderful life. Good call. Good call. It's a classic. Uh, my number three and final, this one's really where I meant like I'm really kind of running out of ideas. I will say honorable mention real quick. Nightmare Before Christmas. I love that movie. Kind of a Wreck It Ralph storyline. You know, Jack Skellington realizes his importance at the end. Yeah. But I just can't. I can't really consider it a Christmas movie. I'm not. I'm right. on the boat that it's a Halloween movie. So that would yeah. be my number three. But <clears throat> my number three is uh, Four Christmases. Uh, oh. Really, not even that good of a movie. Uh, it's, I love it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's uh, it's just kind of good because it has Vince Vaughn, John John. Farbro, I mean, Ted, you're talking about Chevy Chase. I mean, give me Vince Vaughn over him any day of the week. Oh, they're both uh, good. Has star power, has some a couple good laughs. It's oh, kind of like a regular man. movie. So for that reason, it, it's uh, number three on my list, but I don't love it. That easily could be on my list, too. I And that movie, we watch it. We just watched it a couple nights ago, and I crack up. I, even though I know everything that's going to happen, there are some laugh out loud moments in that movie. So yeah, that easily could be on my list, but... My number three is another classic generational thing. Ted, I'd be curious what you think of this movie, but mm -hmm. it's the Santa Claus. Tim Allen, when he turns into the Santa Claus because Santa falls off of his roof right. and his uh, his suit gets left at Tim Allen's house, so he has to become the Santa Claus. It's just, um, you know, it's again, you know, when that came out, Home Improvement, Tim Allen, you know, Tim Allen was just like the, this biggest TV movie star. And I loved everything that he did at that time. So when he put out a Christmas movie, Santa Claus, and, you know, the story's cool. And it's, you know, he, he flies around and his kid gets to go to the North Pole with yeah. him and all that kind of stuff. And again, as a kid, I was picturing like, what if that happened to my dad? You know, something like that. So, you know, that that's that's my number three. That's just those are three that I have to watch every Christmas. That's a good one. I and I did enjoy that one. Yeah. Um, my last one, and I had a list of about seven here, but I got one left, so I'm gonna use it. it. They had a special on, I think, a week or so ago, 20 years after making the film with Hugh Grant to uh, Love Actually, a rom com. Good I thought one. that was that was really a good plot line. You know, they had uh, what was it four or five different storylines yeah. intertwined into one movie i thought it was uh really br brilliantly written the uh, the acting was really good and i enjoyed that one so that that'd be my number three love actually uh wow does do any of us think die hard should be a christmas movie no i can't i've never watched that movie to be honest so you I never really... watched die hard no wow I feel, I feel like I've never watched it from start to finish. Like at this point, I've probably seen it all. Right. But, you know, I've never sat and watched the whole thing. No, it's not a Christmas movie. Okay. Just because Christmas is involved in the movie doesn't mean it's exactly. a Christmas movie. It, I tend to agree with you. Yeah. yeah. 
it's yeah it's a stupid debate i don't know who started it uh, they are a mastermind in just anarchy but it makes no sense i don't know why it's so popular i almost hate that we indulged in this debate it's not it's not a christmas movie man it's just not no I, i'm just throwing it out there because people seem to have that debate this time right. every year but by the way if you haven't had a chance to see it it's a good movie it's a good action movie Solid. bruce willis at his prime man it was it was great <laughs> Bruce Willis uh, in his prime. I was going to ask you, Ted, you know, you brought up your number one Christmas story. Yeah. Did you see that they're like redoing it? Yeah, or they're like up, right? coming out with another one? Are you are you in on that? Are you like, yeah, no. I'm in on it. I'm in on it. I actually, I was going to mention that it's called a Christmas story Christmas and it's, it's Ralphie grown up going back to his hometown, okay. telling his kids about what his childhood was like. I did, did, I did a quick look on Rotten Tomatoes. It gets pretty good ratings. So that surprised me a little bit because I thought that could be a recipe for a disaster. Yeah, match. that's. That's either a pretty good movie or it's the worst movie you've ever put your eyes on. Yeah. Uh, so it's good to say that it's maybe a little bit toward the latter. Yeah. Um, it wasn't he an elf for like a quick second, like as a cameo that that actor, wait, like, am I crazy for thinking that? Peter Billingsley like might have yeah. been, might have been. That's a good yeah, call sure. there. I got to go back like, for one second. Like before... I think he was an elf, right? Wasn't he the one that uh, was counting up his etch-a-sketches or something like maybe, maybe not. I can't remember. Yeah. yeah if, I don't but you want to go back briefly. You, you were starting to dog on me for love. Actually, you didn't like that pick. What would you put in there instead? I mean, I, it was what number nine. Are you, are you talking to me? <laughs> yeah, I, I, I just, I, I wasn't really going to argue it, but I guess I will now that you put me in this corner. Um, yeah. yeah, I remember watching it for like the first five minutes when I was a kid. There's like some sort of scene at a at a register or checkout, and I think I flipped it off. So, <laughs> well, well, I, what about well, now with your girlfriend? Kid, Sit yeah, down with you your girlfriend. It, yeah, on a date night now. Now is the time to watch it. That's a good movie. Exactly. Yeah, I'm, I'm curious. No, I, I, I really didn't have thoughts on it, but you put me in that you put sorry. me in that corner, so I had I, to. I heard the I heard the chuckle too when you said love actually. So I was kind of curious. It is kind of, well, you would think, I mean, he's got this whole lifetime of Christmas movies. That's like not even a Christmas movie, really. So I just was kind of surprised he took that turn. <laughs> yeah. It's a, hey, it's when you a got good the one, ninth though. choice. What are you gonna do? I, I did yeah. see, I forget where it is, if it's on Hulu or Netflix, like they're they're doing a Santa Claus. Tim Allen's doing a yeah. Santa Claus like little mini series. I haven't looked into it kind of like the same thing. Sometimes, you know, it coming back, what, 20, 25 years mm -hmm. later and trying to revisit that storyline. Right. It's almost like, don't even, you're just going to them are disasters. Up. Yeah. But yeah. good movies. I, I can't believe you're so out on Christmas movie, man. You are Jared. You are kind of Grinch. speaking I of the Grinch, the Grinch, the, the Jim Carrey version of the I Grinch know. easily could be on my top three. I, I love ah, that. that movie. Creeps me out, man. I yeah. can't stand it. Yeah, it's kind of creepy. <laughs> there are there are some kind of like intense moments in that movie, but man, you don't you don't like going to the mall during Christmas. You don't like he's a Grinch. Gr man, you I said Christmas that movies. I, I never really did many Christmas things. I mean, I still remember when I found out Santa was a real at like age seven. You know, I, my <laughs> brothers were like, "This is all you need to know about my Christmases, man." Christmas Eve, parents left to probably go Christmas shopping for us. Got beat up by my brothers. Had to go hide from under my parents' bed. Turn to my right. There's the presents. I mean, maybe that's where it all stems from. My Christmas. So <laughs> now we know. Thursday, man. That's He's either Grinch or Scrooge. I don't know which one. Yeah, I, that makes sense. Actually, I, I can see why you're out on Christmas. Yeah. <laughs> one final thing, fellas. It's not Christmas related. I know Jared's been interested. If I've been watching White Lotus, I got one episode to go on season two. It. He's right. It's very good. We've talked about it, HBO, but season one's good and season two is good. And, you know, the storyline, the acting. But I think the thing that's most breath, most breathtaking is the scenery. You know, season yeah. one took place right. in Hawaii. Season two is in one of the most spectacular uh, settings in Sicily and Italy that I've ever seen. And the cinematography is just unreal. It's it just is. really good. It's it's like you know how you like when you're watching Hard Knocks and you're like wow this like they put a lot of money into these like yeah. shots and that's how you feel watching that show you're right it, it that is a bonus when you're watching you feel like you're in Hawaii or you're in Italy when you're watching those episodes yeah. right and as I told you as a dirty old man that I am they have this uh, this brunette uh, young lady that plays a hooker she's one of the most stunning ladies I've ever seen I mean she's beautiful <laughs> so that's not all bad either okay. That's always a good I mean, all the, Yeah, I've, I've seen yeah. a lot of people talk about like, where's the White Lotus going to go next? And right. like, going I, out, yeah. like South Africa or, you know, some right. other places. Some exotic locale for sure. Yeah, I heard I heard Asia was the one I heard. I wouldn't be surprised if it's Africa. I mean, mm -hmm. it just still cracks me up. I love the director, Mike White. He just seems like a good dude. I mean, he's got I just realized this this past weekend. He had like Survivor uh, contestants like cameos in each of the season that I didn't even pick up on. So 
it's just he's just he's a good dude and and after you watch the end of the episode seven ted just make sure you stick around for the mike white basically breaking down the episode oh i'll definitely do that and you know talking about stifler's mom uh did you realize who his, who her uh, husband was i, I mean it's, it's uncle rico from uncle rico yeah <laughs> yeah i just knew that uh, as soon as i saw it <laughs> me too but i didn't know if you knew that or not that's, so that's funny kinda, that's cool great cast that, like great cast there's um look up um if, if you're interested in other podcasts marty smith i think it was marty smith's america podcast that he was yeah. doing for a little while yeah he had uncle rico on this is probably two or three years ago, three, four years ago. Right. Great. Listen, I mean, uncle Rico, he talks about his career and the whole uncle Rico role yeah, <laughs> and all that stuff. And then, you know, Mar- Marty Smith is good too. So yeah, that, that's a podcast I would recommend. Definitely yeah. check that out. Yeah. We really should give him more credit. I mean, he's, he's, in, he's in lost. I mean, he's, mm-hmm. he's been in a lot of good shows. He's really lived on from the uncle Rico role. We should know right. who, what his name is. John well, Grease. Maybe I'll, I'll give him go. a shout out real quick. Yeah. yeah. No, it's John Grease. Oh, John. Yep. John Grease. There you go. Great actor. Yeah. All right. Uh, That's our little uh, entertainment section. Boys, anything else we got to get off the table before we wrap this thing up? We need to get Jared some uh, some Christmas cheer, I think. (laughs) This this weekend, Ted, at your guys's Christmas party, you you need to cheer cheer this guy up a little bit. You know, what? maybe I'll show up with Sky Mint Cannabis. Maybe that'll do it. (laughs) Yep. You know what? I'm I'm looking forward to it. This is real quick. Then I'm done uh, for the pod. Give yeah. me some Christmas cheer. I mean, Avatar. I can't wait to watch it. Oh, Nick, call true. me a nerd. Call me that. It's great reviews. Heard it's awesome. I, I can't wait to see that. It's coming out, you know, within a, a few days here. I think on Friday it drops. I can't yeah. wait. Are you, like, waiting in line? You're going to go see it ASAP? Or are you? I, I think it's almost impossible. I think I would already had to get gotten the tickets. I think it's just that over big. Christmas break. It's it's a must-see. Yeah. Really? Yeah. It's, it's, it's got that big a hype, huh? Yeah. I think so because of the, how big the, the the first one was, you know, right. and it's finally the second one. They've been talking about it for ten years. It seems like they've been talking about the second one. So I, I got to come full disclosure. You guys have talked about Die Hard. I have never seen the original Avatar. I saw it wow. was on network TV Sunday night, but I've no. I've you seen don't watch it. On, I don't watch it on network you. TV. I will so, pass it off to you. You need to watch it. Yeah. All right. Fair have I ever yeah. steered you wrong? Have you noticed that every uh, recommendation I give you is good? Most most of them. Yeah, I'll give you that. What I mean, about my direct- recommendations? What about what I give you? You don't even pay attention to them. <laughs> I was gonna say, uh, what name one? I, I don't. I can't remember one. I gave you the Sopranos originally, didn't right, I? Right, you did. Yeah. So you, I mean, that's enough for a lifetime. Yeah. Usually, usually your recommendations are like some true crime. There's a lot of yeah. murder, murder mysteries, and Jared true. doesn't like that kind of stuff. So. We did talk about Dahmer. That's true. <laughs> no, your your usual recommendations are either a documentary about a band. Or, yeah. yeah, true crime. It's one of those two categories. Very true. I don't know. <laughs> I'll, I'll try to expand my horizons. and. So you got to go up. watch Avatar. <laughs> yeah, I did watch White Lotus. I'm loving it. So, yeah. all right, guys, let's get out of here. Just want to remind everybody we're presented by Memorial Healthcare, home of the Now Community Wellness Center. The Wellness Center offering a 21-day health challenge for just a dollar initiation fee and two bucks a day. Enroll now through January 15th to take advantage of this special offer. Includes all kinds of extra stuff, including one-on-one session with an exercise physiologist, body scan, drop-in group exercise classes, a whole lot more. It's uh, also just something for you, Matt. If you were in our area, they have uh, drop-in child care available. Just two dollars a child for up to two hours. That's not bad. Not bad. We're going to get a babysitter for two dollars for two hours. Heck Incredible. Yeah. So check them out after the 21 day challenge. Uh, become a regular member for just fifteen dollars for your initiation fee. For more details, check it out memorialhealthcare.org backslash wellness dash center. Also, we're teamed with SkyMint Canvas, Michigan's leader in the industry. All kinds of locations throughout the state of Michigan. Uh, their rewards program. You're going to want to check that out. Go online at skymint.com. The coupon code still available at the front of store, 3.20. New customers, 20% off SkyMint products. Also, I want to thank our other great sponsors. They include AZ Printing Solutions, Capital Sports Fieldhouse, Pro Real Estate and Auction, Nelson House Funeral Homes, Rivals Tap House and Grill, and Success Group Mortgage and Servicing. By the way, guys, you know, I run into a lot of people when I go to games or whatnot, and people say, hey, they enjoy our podcast. You know, if anybody out there maybe has ideas for guests or topics you want us to talk about, I think the best way is hit us up on social media, Matt, right? Tell them how to do that. 
Yeah, probably social media is the easiest. Uh, you know, you can find us anywhere. Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, at Three Point Pod, or, you know, like on Facebook, just search Three Point Podcast. Give us a follow. And, yeah, just comment. You know, we post a lot of stuff on all three, Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. So just comment, follow us, and, yeah, shoot, shoot us a message and let us know a guest or any ideas or if you got thoughts on our tedertainment stuff yeah you know, let us know and also follow our youtube channel you know we're trying to expand that and trying to grow that down the road and uh we we love to hear comments and hear from you folks out there for sure mm-hmm. um and just a reminder this has been recorded on streamyard.com and we got the z92.5 game of the week coming up this friday night the final one of 2022 Chessanine at Ovid Elsie will be in the Marauder Gym. You know, Josh Latz has a nice little program going over there, and so does the, the head coach at Chessanine. Those are two pretty good programs out of that Mid-Michigan Athletic Conference in football, basketball, you name the sport. That's and a, that it's Friday good before Christmas break, the gym always has a little bit more electricity. It's always yes. a good environment. So it's fun. It, it is. All right, that'll do it, boys. Until next time, everybody, peace and love. Be kind. Thanks for listening.